point as we welcome you inside Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. A few short moments ago, these two teams made their way out of the Levi Stadium tunnels, and the noise level in this place was deafening. They're set for football as the 49ers get ready to do battle. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line with Eli Manning and the New York Giants. Here we go now. Green, 39. Now it's the Florida Atlantic alum. This is Alfred Morris. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Well, I think that's what they're going to need to do here in the first half. You've got to take some pressure off of this young quarterback, and no better way to do it than to establish the running game early. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Hurry up. Here we go. Hurry up. Off the play fake. He'll look to throw. To the right side, caught by Salad. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. That's a staple of this offense, drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They go play action here on first down. Pressure from his right, and he goes down hard, flat on his back. Kareem Martin in there to bury him for a loss of 11. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. The tight end, Kettle, has it on the left side. A big game there after going backwards, and that'll lead to a third down. Almost not fair. The big guy running the corner route, being able to lean and push and get to where he wants. So how do you stop it? A lot of times you want to have a linebacker on him, a bigger body guy who can handle him physically. But a lot of times that doesn't work as well because his quickness often wins the route. Set. Green. On third down. That's Morris. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. The gain of 11 and a first down. Defense had a chance to get off the field here in the opening drive, couldn't do it. I know that we go into these meetings with coaches and sometimes maybe we can get, you know, a little bit numb because they're always going to talk about how important third down is, aren't they? Offense and defense. In this case, one capitalized, and the other, as you said, had a chance to get off the field and didn't get it done. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. They definitely established a rhythm on this drive, moving the ball quite well. And big man with football is an integral part of the whole thing. Set! Green! Now the Georgia Southern man, it's Matt Breda. And he won't get much, maybe a couple. Down inside the 35 to the 34. Brita CD, an undrafted free agent from a season ago, and with McKinnon out, he's really helped fill the running void for the 49ers. Yeah, remember, they got Jarek McKinnon as a free agent and expect him to be a three-down back for them. As you mentioned, out for the season with an ACL injury. Almost fitting that Matt Brita stepped into the breach for him. They were college teammates at Georgia Southern. Brita leading the league in rushing, tied for the lead, I should say, through the first three weeks of the season. And don't forget in reserve, Kyle Juszczyk, their fullback, who can take some plays at running back as well. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Robbie Gold on now to try the field goal. On the left hash, officially it's called a 51-yard attempt. And Gold is able to put it through. And the 49ers take a 3-0 lead. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted. But I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yeah. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. 
trace their backgrounds, trace their history, you'll find that they were big time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Well, and now those 50 plus yarders seem easy for some reason. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. New York Giants getting the football back here. 2018 for the Giants, unfortunately, a lot like 2017. The switch of coaches, but Pat Shermer, he hasn't had much more success than his predecessor. And don't understand their inability to score points. Because when you're talking about Saquon Barkley at running back, Odell Beckham Jr., Sterling Shepard wide receiver, Evan Ingram tight end, Eli Manning quarterback. There should be a lot more points on the board. Now they have struggled in the offensive line. That's been a little bit of a turnstile for them. But the other question that people always come back to, is there going to be a change at the quarterback position? I don't know how the Giants can do it. Eli Manning is their best bet to try and win football games. The rookie Kyle Lawlett out of Richmond, he's been inactive in every game in the first part of the season. Here's a second and two now from the 33. On second down, here's Barkley. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. And you remember pre-draft, there was a lot of speculation that the Giants should look for their future quarterback at number two with a great possibility. Remember, Sam Darnold from USC was still on the board, but they passed on him to take this runner, Saquon Barkley. And this is exactly why. They think he can extend the life of Eli Manning's career and give them 1,000-yard seasons year after year. They haven't had a 1,000-yard season since 2012. Ahmad Bradshaw did it then. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. And it's Reuben Foster in on the tackle. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Now they'll throw it with Manning. And this is Shepard on the catch. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. Throwing is Manning on third down. And this is going to be incomplete. And give credit to Reuben Foster, the linebacker, getting a hand in to disrupt. And third down is a key down in any game you play. And third down defense, something we've got to watch in this one. Got to be effective on the passing downs. That's a pretty good first step right there. Fourth down, so on is the punter, Riley Dixon. The speedster, Dante Pettis, back deep to return. The San Francisco offense getting their last minute instructions before they take over here. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. Tackle made that time by B.J. Hill. Now that's the defense that they were looking for, being able to get extra bodies to the point of attack to deal with the big guy carrying the ball. You really don't want to be in a position where it's a one-on-one -on -one tackle with him. Here's Breida. And a nice pickup as this one gets him to the 10-yard line. The tackle by Janoris Jenkins. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Third down. That's Morris. And he'll be taken down, losing yardage back at the nine yard line. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. 
You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. The punt team on now as Pinion sends this one away. <laughs> Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And it'll be Giant football first and 10. Here's the Giant offense now making their way back out onto the field. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? To Shepard complete over the middle. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 15 yards is the pick up there, and the drive starting very nicely. First down. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw. Well, forget about finding a lane there. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Probably fortunate he was able to hold on to the football. Here's a give to Barkley. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. Only a yard on the gain there, and that'll set up third and 13. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. On third and long, it's Manning. He dumps it off to Barkley. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Give him seven on the play, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. You like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. The 49er offense now making their way out onto the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Well, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Bathard. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And <laughs> what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Now a toss play. It's Breda looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. Alec Ogletree in on the stop. But it didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. The Niners on third down. Just one for three thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. All right, here we go. They run with Breda. <laughs> and he brings this up to the 46. Good enough for the first. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Everyone understood their role on that play. Third and one, you know the defensive guys, they're trying to get down and get low and get leverage on the offensive lineman, but they didn't allow that to happen. They created a crease and allowed him to get through for a first down. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And they'll stop him right on the midfield stripe. Second quarter now, Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis with you. It's the 49ers in control of the football. They face a second and seven to start things out. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. 
Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 12 yards there as they move the chains. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are. You know, make him make someone miss in the open field. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. The intended receiver, Marquise Goodwin. That'll bring up second down. Well, we always talk about how you've got to be quick when you go through your progressions, and here's another prime example. Trying to look downfield, he was standing in the pocket, but just couldn't find anyone open, could he? No, not enough time. They hit him and forced that incompletion. So line of scrimmage, still the 39 on second and 10. Green, 39! Green, 39! Ah! They'll throw here, Bethard. Complete to the tight end, Kittle, over the middle of the field. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Second down pass play got them eight yards. Now they've got a third and a couple remaining. They run with Morris. And he will cross the 30 down to the 29-yard line. He needed three. He got two. Now that'll set up an interesting situation here on fourth and a yard. Well, they picked up a portion of it, but not all that they needed. Now that leads to a decision on fourth and one. Let's see what they decide to do. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. Made his first. This now from 46 yards away. And Gold is able to put it through. And that will double their lead as it's up to six. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. That they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. Oh, the return is Henderson. And the Giants ready to come out now. They've had it twice. They've punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, Everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice, so they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? They'll start out on the ground, and Saquon Barkley. Oh, he breaks a tackle, and he's got an alley. A big seam, and he might go all the way. Touchdown! Giants, Saquon Barkley, 67 yards. And the Giants have tied it here, and they can take the lead if they hit the PAT. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. Rosas good with the extra point, and they take the lead here at seven to six. Rosas now to kick this one away. Here's James. And a nice job there as he gets this one up just shy of the 35-yard line at the 34. Out on the field now, here come the 49ers. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I've never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> 
Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that. They weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive the end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. This will be a two-yard loss on the play, and that'll make it second and 12. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Here we go now. Green, 39. Now it's Morris. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. Two yards gets them back to where they started, but now third and 10. I think you mentioned in the opening drive that these guys needed to establish the run, protect the young QB. I actually wrote that down, believe it or not. So how would you assess things so far? I'm kind of touched that you actually wrote something like that down. <laughs> I appreciate that, partner. But I do think they've been able to do that. Maybe not as effectively as they've wanted to, but I think we'll see more of as this game goes along because they want to continue to take care of that young QB. And that is incomplete. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively and then just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. Here's Bradley Pinion now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And this will be taken at the 13. It's a four-yard return following a punt of 49. And the Giants' drive will start from deep in their territory with a first and 10. And here comes the Giants' offense back out onto the field. And coming off a one-play drive that was so deflating for the defense, what, what's their mentality? How do they rally here and stop this offense? Well, hopefully there's some determination that sets in because I, they weren't ready to go on the last one. Give all the credit to the offensive guys for getting it done, but to allow a run of that length, that's just not being prepared. So now, are they determined? Are they ready to read their keys and make the proper plays? Yeah, and we'll see how determined they are. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. A handoff to Barkley. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. On first down, Manning. Throw left side, complete to Ingram. And a nice gain of 21 yards. For many teams, the evaluation of tight ends has really changed. We used to wonder about how they would block first and foremost. Now we want to know how these guys can run because we envision them in offenses, catch the ball, how much yardage can they gain after that? And that on display there for a good pickup. On first and 10, here's Manning. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. The completion good for three, and it's second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. That first down completion only netted him three, second and seven. Shotgun now for Manning, and the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. Well, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player, not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Now Manning again. They'll set up the screen to Barkley. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Only two on the screen pass there, and it'll be fourth down. 
They dialed up the screen pass on third down, and for a second, it looked like it was all going to come together, and they had a chance to pick up a first down, but the defense got there and finished it off. Here's Riley Dixon now as he's on to punt for New York. The 49ers offense now, they work their way back onto the field. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stop that one for a short gain. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. Hurry up, here we go. 319. This is Breda. Just a couple on the ground there, and that's going to bring up third and about six. Two yards on the first down carry, and then followed up by two yards on the second down carry. Well, that's definitely not going to be enough to get the job done. Wasn't the expression three yards in a cloud of dust? <laughs> now they're going to need six on third down to keep the drive going. The Niners on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This will be third and six. To throw is Bethard. Free going down the left side. It's a foot race. Touchdown, 49ers. Marquise Goodwin, 79 yards. And the Niners are able to cash in for six. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions, and I'd hear nine from the receivers, that meant fly route, go, uh-oh, look out. That was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. Oh, the return is Henderson. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. And New York set to take the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys, win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not pump the ball again. They begin with a run by Barkley. And he is met at the line of scrimmage. And he goes down right there. DeForest Buckner in on the tackle. Double this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. Now Saquon Barkley. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. Well, with the kind of half he's had, I think we can forgive him that run, right? Not every run's going to be a big play, is it? No, and also the blocking just wasn't there. No room to run. Yeah, defensively, they got to find a way to build on that because he's eating them alive in the first half. Throwing on third and long. Manning. And Fowler's got it. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. His first catch, and it's a pretty big one. They get the conversion on third down. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Manning now hitting on 80% of his passes in the early going. Eight of ten. It's first down. They'll run with Barkley. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. 
Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. It's Barkley on the counter. Takes to midfield, but no further. Just a yard there. What an advantage having an elite guy in the middle of the defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, but he can also make plays himself, as we just saw there. The Giants on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This will be third and five. From midfield, here's Manning. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. And a gain there of 11 yards. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Throwing on first down is Manning. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. So line of scrimmage still to 39 on second and 10. Manning again here on second and ten. And he comes back with one complete. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? On third down, Manning over the middle complete. It's Shepard. And now the 49ers signal for a timeout defensively as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Aldrich Rosas now to try the Giants' field goal. This will be spotted at the 37, so it's a 47-yard attempt. And the kick by Rosas is good. And that will cut the lead back down to three at 13 to 10. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive gets them three, not six. Is it okay if I give credit to both sides on this one? Absolutely. All right, let's start defensively. They hung in there. Ten-play drive, but they stiffened when they got close to the goal line, made them kick a field goal. And for the offense, ten-play drive. They might be a little disappointed they got a field goal, but they moved the ball down the field with dispatch and came away with points. After the field goal, here's Rosas to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The 49ers offense now, they get set to head back on the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. <laughs> To throw is Beathard. That's to the right side, complete to Kittle. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. A gain of six there on first. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As he'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime.
They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Here we go now. Blue landing. Now Beathard. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. Trent Taylor, the one he was looking for. And that'll make it third down. Play action, they'll throw. And this is going to be incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. Here's Bradley Pinion now, as he's on to punt for San Francisco. Taking it about the 16. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. The New York set to take the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing. You're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you got to figure... Ready? If something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk this is a big decision here. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. A CD, as we look forward, get closer and closer to the postseason, what do you think if you had to pick the Super Bowl teams right now, who would you take? Let me start in the NFC. And I think that the Rams and New Orleans seem to have separated a little bit right now. They seem to be the prime two teams. But I'm looking in the NFC South, and the Carolina Panthers would scare the heck out of me if I were anyone in the NFC. Defense continues to get better. Cam Newton having his best season since his MVP year of 2015. Versatile weapons on offense now. I like the momentum that they've been building. On the AFC side, of course, you have to say New England until further notice, naturally. You have to say Kansas City. But I do think that Houston has really built something because of their defense especially. But bottom line for me, the Los Angeles Chargers Ooh. are really starting to make a move with Phillip Rivers leading them. Yeah, all the talk about the Chiefs, but the Chargers right there. The Giants on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is going to be third and 13. This is Barkley. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. As the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. Here's Riley Dixon now as he's on to punt for New York. Taken in at the 11. Shifts by him. They'll call that a punt of 59 yards. Tough to do better than that. And the 49ers will take over deep in their own territory. The 49ers offense making its way back out there. And the ball backed way up. So thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it. And we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink it in this situation. Either side of the ball. Just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about let's it. Let's go. 319. They'll start on the ground with Breda. And he'll lose yardage here. Back to the 15. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Let's go. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. 
So we've hit halftime here in Santa Clara with the 49ers out in front as we'll send you eastward to Orlando. Standing by with that EA Sports halftime report now is Jonathan Coachman. Take it away, Coach. It's the 49ers out in front, and they will get the football first as well as we are back and started in the second half. Manning and the Giants come up now first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Working from the gun, Manning. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked up by Akella Witherspoon. And they will take over at the 29-yard line. First possession of the third quarter, an interception, so maybe a second-half tone setter. Indeed, and not the tone they wanted to set. That's the equivalent of running out the wrong door and running into your pool instead of running out onto the field. A real dud for that one. Has that happened to you before? No, but I've heard stories about teams actually doing that back in the good old days. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Breida. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Took till the second half, but finally a red zone opportunity here. They have a first and 10 at the 18. Now it's Breida. And this has been a recurring theme tonight for sure. Nowhere to run. Back to the line of scrimmage, that's all. No gain on the play there. Second down. They just keep trying, but so far, finding no room for him to run. Not none whatsoever. In fact, you run the numbers. He's under three yards of carry at the moment. The rush defense stout on first down. Here's second and 10 from the 20. All right, here we go. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. It'll be a pickup of five, and that leaves him with five more. Third and five now. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. The Niners on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This will be third and five. All right, here we go. Here's Beathard to throw. And he hauls it in, in the end zone. Touchdown, San Francisco. George Kittle from 13 yard town. And the Niners take advantage of field position on the turnover to catch this one in. They had to go to the monitor, get an extra look. That's what the technology is for, and this touchdown will count. Now gold for the extra point. Gold able to tack on the extra point, and his guys will take a 10-point lead. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. Oh, the return is Henderson. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23 yard line. Here's the giant offense now as they get ready to take over here. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. He's got the hook up to Odell Beckham. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Give him 10 yards there, and about by the nose of the football, he's going to have a first down. 
you know as well as I do, it's really important to get Odell Beckham Jr. involved early. And that's the first time that Eli Manning was able to find him, and we're in the second half. You think he and Eli maybe had some words on the sideline, hey, let's get on the same page? Without a doubt, because they know that that kick starts their team. That gets them going. And now they have to do it again and again as we go down the stretch. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. That'll be a loss of four yards on the play. And that's going to make it second and 14. From the gun, it's Manning. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away. And now it's third. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Throwing on third and long. Manning. And Ingram holds it in. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. They chalk that one up as a gain of 34 on third down. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Now a play fake here on first down. Try to lay one up deep. And he finds Shepard. Touchdown, Giants. Sterling Shepard, 37 yards. And the Giants able to get this back within a touchdown. And he's a little bit on the shorter side as a receiver. Maybe sometimes for the defense, tough to find the little guys, right? Yeah, sometimes they get lost in the traffic. But usually what it means is that rather than just winning with height or even speed, they use their quickness to find a way to get open. Well, tall, short, wide, skinny, whatever. There it results in a touchdown. Rosas now to kick this one away. Here's James. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple of extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And the 49ers getting set to trot out there. And that last touchdown drive they had very balanced. How key is that balance? It's huge because most of the time when we talk about balance is run, pass, almost 50-50. But most of the times when you talk to offensive coaches, they say balance is we do what we want when we want to. <laughs> and that means that they're ahead of the defense, keeping them on their heels. Yeah, they imposed their will on that last drive. They'll begin the drive with Breda. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Now let's go. 319. Seven consonants, one vowel. Here's Yuschek. Trying to keep those big legs churning, but he's going to go down in the backfield. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. Now let's go! Blue landed! Back to throw Bethard. They find some open field here. And now look at this. Big game, but a fumble. And who's got it? The Giants. So the defense there, opportunistic. 
It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of what the offensive guy didn't do. Didn't secure the ball, didn't cover up. In this case, let's just give credit to where it belongs. Knocked it free, made a big play. Throwing to start the drive, but that went incomplete. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Well, Charles, the uh, trade deadline obviously is now passed. So you look back at the number of guys that went different places. Wh which trade caught your eye the most? Well, there are a few of them, and they all had one thing in common as far as I could tell. They're all made with the idea of that team winning big this year. Ha-ha mm -hmm. Clinton Dix from Green Bay to Washington. Washington in first place at the time when they make the trade. They're thinking about winning their division and advancing in the playoffs, getting more help in the secondary. How about Golden Tate going from Detroit to Philadelphia? The Eagles trying to defend their Super Bowl championship, adding a receiver for Carson Wentz. Eli Apple from the Giants to New Orleans. They're thinking about not just defending the NFC South, but maybe having to play the LA Rams again in the playoffs with another corner. And Amari Cooper going from Oakland to Dallas because Dallas believes if they have a threat out wide, it opened things up for Ezekiel Elliott and get the Cowboys back on the beam. Yeah, some decent names, some big trades. By the way, my favorite name in the league, Ha Ha Clinton Dix. No question about <laughs> it. Orlando's own. Here's Riley Dixon now, as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. The San Francisco offense getting their last-minute instructions before they take over here. And last drive, obviously not what you're looking for. You've got the lead. You've got to protect the football. So, in other words, someone got lucky because <laughs> they've been moving the ball really well and wearing them down. In this case, though, giving up the football doesn't make them very happy. They can't wait to get back out there and atone for it. Yeah, try to atone for it here on this drive. And he'll get him a little bit of breathing room across the five to the six-yard line. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. And while they hope to continue this drive, it's really already mission accomplished. They've given enough space now that they have to pump the ball. They've done so with that first run. A little more room here on second and six from the six. Here's Beathard to throw. Over the middle of the kettle, complete. And brought down, but not before they're able to get it up to the 25. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. His position, and he's listed as a tight end, but he certainly doesn't run like one. And that's what we're seeing more and more coming into the league. Those guys who can run, make plays after the catch, and gain that additional yardage. And using that speed there to turn it into a pretty nice little game. Let's go! They go play action here on first down. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to George Kittle. It's tight end, and it's second down. Well, Charles, we got a second here. Let's do an MVP check-in right now at this point in the season. Is Patrick Mahomes your headliner? He is for me. Uh, look, second year playing, one start as a rookie, and what he's done so far, it's been absolutely spectacular. Magnificent right, consistency. Boom, Hasn't had any real dips. Boom, now, before the season, you know I was focused in on Todd Gurley, and he continues to power the Rams' attack. He has to be in the conversation. Drew Brees, how many completions does he throw per game? One or two? It's unbelievable with his accuracy. Tom Brady is still Tom Brady and wins big games. Phillip Rivers with a strong second half could get into the conversation, but keep a real eye on the NFC South. Matt Ryan ahead of his MVP pace of 2016. Let's go! Cam Newton and Carolina, if they end up winning that division, you better take a hard look at him. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. Five yards will get him back to the original line of scrimmage, but now they're looking at third and 10. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. The Niners on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. Set. This is third Three, and 10. Beathard. The tight end, Kittle, has it on the left side. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. 
he wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. And a nice special teams job here. This is going to be down inside the 10 at the 7-yard line. The Giants offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball to their territory. A first down carry for Barkley. And he's going to be taken down here at about the 10. There to stop him on the defensive side, Fred Warner. Vision is so important for the man in the middle because his ability to, to, to look through all the clutter that's happening in front of him, diagnose a play, and then go make it and finish it, that's when the great ones know that they have the goods. Manning the throw on second down. And bringing it in right side here, Beckham. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the 20 at the 18. Manning able to find OBJ there for a Giants first down. Manning now on first down, looking deep downfield. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. And that's what he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Now whistles here and a flag down. I think a giant jumped early. So after the penalty, heading in the wrong direction, second and 15. After the penalty, they go with Barkley. And he'll be taken down at the 18. Earl Mitchell gets him down there. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. They fake the handoff. Now Manning. He's going to air one out. So they took a shot there on third down. Couldn't get it. Now it's four. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit, and they may have to change accordingly. Here's Riley Dixon now. Standing right on his own five-yard line. And it's fielded at the 34. It's a 47-yard punt, but they did give up 10 on the return. And the Niners will go on offense first and 10. And San Francisco gets set to go here. They were forced to punt last time. I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot. Great opportunity to run your full playbook. They want to take a shot here, they can go ahead and do it. They'll throw here, Bathur toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Trent Taylor there, and that'll bring up second down. Well, with that incompletion, Charles, I, I want to revisit our preseason Super Bowl picks. Must, must we? Well, we're getting closer and closer toward the playoffs. Okay, so we have to who, revisit Who them? did you have? You had the Falcons. I had Atlanta. But you couldn't predict all those injuries the Falcons couldn't had. Couldn't predict all the injuries. And heading into their open week, they had one, two in a row. And then beat Washington after the open week. So all is not lost. But well, that's caught at the 25. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. And that one results in 35 yards. 
We just saw him hit a big play there on a deep post. And most of the time, the post isn't available because you usually have defenders in the middle of the field. But if you throw enough curls and crossing routes and underneath routes, <laughs> I know from experience, they get tired of watching those balls get caught. They start to creep up a little bit, and that's when you can hit them big over the top. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but... There are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Back now here in Santa Clara. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. All right, here we go. 3 19. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And only about a yard there as he takes it from the nine to the eight. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying it around campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? Right, he's in big trouble. Now back to throw. Flushed out right. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. They'll wind up getting four there on his own, but it will leave him now with a third down situation. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. Hurry up, here we go. Boom. Back to throw here. Looking for Garcon, he's got it. Touchdown 49ers. Pierre Garçon from four yards out. And the 49ers add on to their lead. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. On oh, the return is Henderson. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The New York set to take the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not, He's not a team anymore. I just cut it, <laughs> all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Hey, poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But so, hey, listen, there's something that, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. Bearing it deep. And that's caught inside the 30. It's a big-time play there for the G-Man. 44 yards. I'd have to say that whenever you see a good post route run, they do not like to let it end without the catch. Hence, that great diving play. Yeah, lay it up there, let him go get it, and he got it. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. On first down, Manning. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. The pro bowler Odell Beckham, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. Manning will try again on second down. To Barkley on the check down. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 
It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. Well, it's tough to be a defender in today's NFL because there's so many things to account for in today's passing game, including the back sneaking out of the backfield. Not quite as bad as a turkey bowl where you have that center eligible stuff, but still a lot of guys to account for. Into the red zone now, Manning. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Throwing again, Manning. And it's incomplete. This drive, which was going so smoothly, all of a sudden it's a little bit of a roadblock here with two straight incompletions. Yeah, apparently this defense has had enough. Apparently they're saying no more. We're speaking a stand right here, right now. But it is third and ten. They've got to get after him one more time. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Again, they'll throw with Manning. They'll set up the screen to Barkley. And they're going to lose some on this play. Being knocked back to the 18. Call it a loss of two on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the right hash, it's a 35-yard attempt. And Rosas puts this one through. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get it the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. After the field goal, here's Rosas to kick it away. Here's James. And there is a flag as he's brought down right at the 25-yard line. But who's this going to be against? Trailing in the fourth this close of a game, that's a penalty you just can't afford. It's an absolute killer, and it's one that drives coaches and teammates insane. So the face mask gets him a free 15 to start the drive. All right, here we go. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And he just gets rid of it, throws it away. The wise move there looked like nobody open. Now second down. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it, or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. Hey boys, got four. Hurry up. Here we go. To throw is Bethard. Room here to run. Escaping the pressure right. Give him seven there on the tuck and run, and they're in better shape now for third. towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around and make a play on the football. Three, to throw is Bethard. Oh, 
And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. George Kittle, the receiver that he was looking for. And that'll bring up second down. Well, not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. All right, here we go. 319! 319! Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. That is caught right at the 10-yard line. And they'll get this down to the 10. First target, first catch, and a first down. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. So first and goal, points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. And they'll go on the ground. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, San Francisco. A great play there. A 10-yard touchdown run. And the 49ers add six to their lead. Solid job up front. Really just a solid job all the way around to get that one in. That was well executed, wasn't it? Well blocked, well run. End result, six points. Touchdown. Gold with the extra point. And the lead now up to 14. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. Oh, the return is Henderson. And he'll take this across the 25. Couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And New York set to take the field. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. They'll run it now out of the gun. Able to power through. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw it through three quarters. No reason to lighten up now. On second down, here's Manning. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Fowler. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Call it a gain is seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. Fourth quarter, every drive's so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You've got the first one for the second one to even matter. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Now Manning throwing on second down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was looking for Odell Beckham that time. And it's third and four. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. The Giants on third down. They've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. This is third and four. Now Manning. He dumps it off to Barkley. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. They'll get a couple yards on that one, and it'll be fourth down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. 
tackle him after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. They'll run with Barkley. And brought down, but not before he was able to break the tackle and the extra effort moves the sticks. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. And on fourth and one as a running back, you're looking for any seam you can find. This is now where you want to be a hero and break off a big one. You just need to make sure you get that yard. And here he picks up the first down with a couple of yards to spare. A first carry for the Clemson man, Wayne Goldman. And he'll be taken down right around the 41-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. Manning to throw on second down. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. Now correct me if I'm wrong, you know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. Throwing on first down is Manning. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. It'll be a three-yard gain, and that'll make it a second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Looking to throw on second down. Manning. He was trying to get it to Benny Fowler that time. And it's third down. And that incompletion was caused by the defense. I think they were trying to get one into the middle of the field, trying to find a receiver there. But they were in zone defense. And what are the advantages of being in zone? Eyes and reaction. Eyes meaning all eyes are on the quarterback and able to react when he throws the football and rally to that spot. And that's exactly what happened there. Able to get there and knock it away. Open man right side is Ingram. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. Now whistles here and a flag down. I think a giant jumped early. The full start backs him up five, first and 15. Now Manning again. That is caught right at the 10-yard line. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. That one good for 17 yards, and now they've got it first and goal. Now Manning. And this is caught now for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know. It doesn't you gotta, feel right. Exactly. <laughs>
Rosas now to kick this one away. Here's James. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. The 49er offense now making their way out onto the field. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense that's humming. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense get the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. Green, 39, Green. A handoff to Brita to begin the drive. And yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. And now the Giants will stop play as they take a timeout defensively. As they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Another running situation on the doorstep as they come up second and ten. Three down, three down. All right, here we go. They run again with Brita. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. Yeah, and now the Giants, they get the officials' attention and take another timeout. As he'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. Now here's a whistle and a timeout. It's called by the receiving team here. As it comes with a minute 25 left to go in the contest. Here's Bradley Pinion now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Fielded just inside the 20. And that negates a pretty decent punt return. And the goal is to gain a first down on a punt return, which is 10 yards. This was much more than that, but it is going to come back due to the illegal block in the back. So the special teams penalty cost some yardage there as they come out on first and 10. He'll look to throw. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. This defense has watched their lead dwindle away. This is where they really need to bow up. They executed well there. And it's often hard after you've played really well early and then you kind of relax a little bit to step on the gas again. They just did it on the last play. Looks like they want to finish this one off. Back to throw. They'll complete this to Ingram is tight in. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. They'll look to throw. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off by Akella Witherspoon. And they will score. It's a 49 touchdown. What you just saw there, first-round talent, second year, even more success. A pick six for a touchdown. A great play. And it's tough for these guys, you've told me before, to adjust in the secondary as a first-year guy. So that sophomore season is big for them. They really start to expand the playbook for them even more. Sometimes they dumb it down a little bit to make them comfortable year one. By year two, they should have all the nuances, and now they've adjusted to the speed of NFL play as well. Showed right there.
So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Oh, the return is Henderson. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. The Giants offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. Now Manning to try again after the pick six. And oh, look at that, a diving catch. They may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. First down now, but that clock rolling. And now the spike comes with 28 seconds left on the clock. Manning to throw on second down. He's going to let it fly. And that's caught inside the 30. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. That one goes for 36 yards. And the spike comes with nine seconds left to go. And that one is incomplete. And now we're inside of 10 seconds. Just nine remain. Again, it's Manning. And that is incomplete, stopping the clock with five seconds to go. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. One final try now for Manning. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. A big offensive explosion help leading them to victory. And the defensive guys, they're just saying, hey, put those points up every week. We'll just keep winning. They will gratefully accept them, won't they? It makes their job that much easier when they're scoring that many points. Allows them to play with a totally different style and a different flow. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. The 49ers get the win here at home as we say so long from Santa Clara.